Good morning. As we start. Good morning. Bye. And good morning. As we start the book of uh, Numbers, the book of Amidbar. Today, Sunday, the 27th day of the month of the year. We are starting the book of Numbers, Bamidbar. We are starting on chapter one, verse number one. And God spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai, in the tent of meaning, in the first month of the first day of the second month. In the second year, from, the, from going out of Egypt, Lamer saying. So now she says, because they were dear to him. He counted them, they, God counted them very often. He went, he counted them when they left Egypt. He counted them in Exodus, where many of them fell because of the sin of the golden calf. He counted them to know the number of survivors. Again in Exodus, when he came to cause the divine presence to rest among them, he counted them on the first of Mishka, on the first of Nisam, when the Mishkan was erected. And on the first of year, he counted them. So somebody who counts something that is dear to him, the Jewish people are dear to him, and he counts them. Verse number two. Take a sum of the congregation of the Jewish people, the Mishpach to their families. The Vesa Vesam to the, the head count of every male. This Pashem is called Rachel Gilgul Isam. So now she said, the Mishpach means to the, to the tribe. The Vesa Vesam. So in, in, in by Jews, it goes the, to the mother. In your Yiddish guys, if you're a Jew, you have to have a Jewish mother. And uh, but it, to the tribe, it goes to the father. Look, so if you're a Koyin, because your father was a Koyin, if you're a lady, because your father was a lady. The Google what means the Google Well, as she says, to the Shekel. So you Google, the Google is simply translated as the head, but it also means a Shekel. Per head. That's how it's counted. Verse 3. Ben Esim from 20 years and upwards. All those who are fit to go out to the army. Tifkud Aisam, you should count them. Mitzvaisam, to the legions. Atav Ada and you and Ada. So here we learn another law, a different concept, and that is that the only from 20 and above can somebody go out to war. Torah didn't want a person younger than 20 should be away from learning Torah and uh, should go to go in war. If you learn Torah until you're 20 and then go to go out to learn the army. Verse number four. When you count it, you should always have the head of the tribe with you. That the heads of Nasi of each tribe, there were 12 tribes, 13 tribes, and each of the tribes, when he counted them, he always had the Nasi. This was a Zeris Akov, so let's say, a decree from the Torah. Now the Torah tells us who the heads of tribes at that time. Verse 5 These are the names of the people that are going to stand with you as the heads of the tribe. Ruven, to the tribe of Ruven, Leitzu, Ben Jdeir. The Shimon Shlumiel ben Tzuri Shaddai. The Yehuda Nachshem ben Aminadav. The Yisachar Nisdanel ben Tzuar. The Zvulon Eliyav ben Chelon. The Bnei Yosef to the children of Yosef because there were two tribes. The Ephraim to the tribe of Ephraim Elishama ben Amiud. The Menashe to the tribe of Menashe Gamliel ben Pedotzer. The Binyamin to the tribe of Binyamin, every done Ben Gidoni. The Don, to the tribe of Don, Achiezer Ben Amishadai. The Asher to the tribe of Asher, Fagiel Ben Acher. The God to the tribe of God, Eliasa Ben Duel. The Naphtali to the tribe of Naphtali, 
Achira ben Enon. Verse 16. El Kriya Eida. These are the callings of the tribes. Um, these are, I'm so sorry. These are the callings of the tribes, uh, the leaders, Mate Avaisa, to their uh, to the heads of their the families, Rashi Al Pisoim, they are the heads of the thousands of Jews. Rashi says, why are they called Nisim El Akruye? These are the summons that they were always called whenever something was needed. So Mishra Beno called the heads of the tribes. Each tribe had his Nasi. So he would call first all the heads of the tribes, and then he would talk to them. They were the ones who were the first, what they call today, Knakas. Verse 17. And Mishra Alan took these people that were indicated in their names. So as he says, that these are the 12 princes, the 12 Nasim. By Ashenikfu, but by him here by the names they were announced their names. So he called them first, and they called the rest of the Jews. It's called the Hey Kilu, and they gathered in all the Jewish people. The first day of the second month, and so that that will be the first day of the month of the year. First month is Nisa, and the second month is Ear. He saw them and they declared their pedigree according to their families. They missed Pashemes. So they all came and they gave a machsa shekel. All those that were to, uh, uh, counting of their names, maybe Ben shot of a from 20 years and above, the Google to their head count. So I still over here was another thing. They they declared their pedigree. What does that mean? The yichus, what's called yichus in Hebrew, a Everybody had to prove who they were, who was their lineage. This is something that, in many ways, has been lost through the exile of two thousand years. We lost our yuchsim. How many generations? Can you go back to know who you, your great, great, great grandfather was? As long as Jews were together, it was easy to go back generations of generations. So everybody needs to say who was their grandfather, great grandfather, great, great grandfather. That they would know exactly that they came out of that shevet. As God commanded Moshe in verse 19. And he counted them in the desert of Sinai. That is the Chumash of the day. We go to the Tanya of the day. We are holding in chapter 52 of Tanya. The Alter Rebbe, yesterday, the Alter Rebbe continued what we, what we learned on Friday in the aspect of the way the Abishta. God created the world. And the way ultimately God resides, or you want to call, reveals himself in the world. So the Alter Rebbe continues, the Alter Rebbe explains the concept of the way godliness, the, the, the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, comes within the world. And... Um, and it comes within the world and reveals himself in the world. So he has to, the Shina is, for example, the, I mean, the the, the, the just gave the example of the, uh, the, the Shemesh, the, the, the sun. The sun itself comes down in an oil. The oil is bottled to the Shemesh, is nullified to the Shemesh, to the sun itself. The sun is the illuminary, and the oil is the illumination. So the, the, the oil, the, the illumination, if it returns to the sun, becomes nullified. It's part of the sun. So the illuminary is the sun, and the illumination is the is the earth. So the oil is gives light to the world. 
but the ur is always connected to illumination and the ur has the capability to reveal the sun so to say and the sun shines because the sun is does there to shine the sun is does there to shine and it gives this illumination the ur the light that comes down to the world so too the Abishtik can't come down and reveal himself in the world. He reveals himself through an oil, through a light. This light is already a condensed concept. It's already something that is that 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 that, that so to say hides the the, the essence of, of, of the light. What is this light? How can this light, this okay, how can, what what in the world can handle? the light of the sun and at the same time come down to the world what is the light of the sun in comparison the analogy of the sun and its light what is the godliness and its light that comes down to the world what is that light so the altar ever says a fascinating concept let's learn our screen the screen itself she they she's a gilly the origin and core of the manifestation whereby the blessed and insight illuminates the world in a revealed form in which the source of all streams of vitality in the world the entire vitality being no more than the light which is diffused from it like the ray light radiant from the sun so the sun is the essence, is the is the illuminary. The ray of the sun is thus the light of that sun. And that's the light that the world can handle. It's only the light of the sun, the ray of the sun, it can handle the sun itself. But the, the ray of the sun has everything that the sun has, but it's not the sun. If it would return to the sun, it's bottle, it's nullified. It will be impossible for the world to receive the light of the Shekhinah. That's like it will be impossible for the world to receive the sun. It has to come down through a, that's why the Gemara also says, the Abish to God put the sun in a sheet. He put the sun in a sack, so to say. Took the sun, he put it in a, in, in, in a, in, in, in a, in a, in a sack. And now the ray comes out of uh, the what comes out of the sack is what the world can handle. Because the, the sun, if the sun would move an inch closer to the world, the world would, just, would, would burn up. If the sun would move an inch away, it would freeze up. So the sun had the image to put exactly where the sun could be. So, and then he put it, the sun itself in a, in a sack. So now the earth that comes from the sun, the ray of the sun, the world can handle. So too, the, the Shekhinah itself is like the sun, cannot be able to, 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 to the world would not handle this, this earth. The tish can stop is mamish, below levush, it needs to have a garment. That's like the sun needs to have its garment, so to say. The Shekhinah needs a garment. What is the garment that can handle on one hand the sun, that can surround the sun, and at the same moment give light to the world? The little amal masmem. So that it, it, the garment to screen and conceal it, the light from them. And the only way the image to can only make, a, 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 that's like God can only make a lavush for the sun. So to God is the only one who can make a lavush a garment for his own itself. What is the garment that God made that would, on one hand, be a lavush for, so to say, godliness, and at the same time, reveal godliness, the, the godliness that the world can handle. For in battle, so that they not may not become entirely nullified and lose their identity within their stores, just like the light of the sun is nullified in its source, namely in the sun itself. 
where the light cannot be seen, but only integral mass of the sun itself. There's no light in the sun. You go to the essence of the sun, you just have sun. You don't have light. The sun gives off a light. So the, it, when you take the sun, that's why the Alter Rebbe says, for example, fire always goes to It wants to return to the sun, to its source. Even though when it goes to the sun, it's totally nullified within the sun. Let's go to this connection, the first explanation, the first box. So to since the Shrina is a source and the vitality of the whole creation, all of which we see is but a ray of the Shrina, if the Shrina itself, the actual source, would be manifest, all created beings will be nullified. If the sun would come closer to the world, they would be burned the world. If the Shrina would reveal itself to the world, the world would become bottled. The world would nullify itself. The situation would be exactly similar to the sun's ray as they are found within the orb of the sun, uh, orb of the sun where, they can, where they are completely nullified. So in order for the Shrina, the Shrina means where the God dwells. That's the Shrina, the spirit of Malchus, the attribute of Malchus, kingship. Is where God dwells, the base of Middash. The base of Middash is where God dwells, this world is where God dwells. So the Shrina to dwell within the world and the creation, there must be therefore a garment which serves to conceal its light. Only then can creation receive the Shrina and not be nullified in its existence. So the Shrina, what is the Shrina? Where is where does God reside so that it can that the world can receive its, its power, its capability? Here's how the Rebbe says, What is the garment which is able to conceal and clothe the Shina, yet while yet will not itself be completely nullified within the light? What can be the Shina? What is the garment, so to say? That closes this Shina. Avishta wants to reveal himself in the world. He wants to reveal himself very, very little so that the world will not nullify itself. So he takes the Shina, which if he would reveal the Shina itself, it would be the world would nullify itself. So he, he takes the Shina and he puts it in a little bush. What is the garment that can on one hand handle it, handle the Shina that's not gonna nullify itself? Why wouldn't the garment become nullified? So the Abishta made a lavush that can handle this earth, and only God can make this garment. Because he made the earth, he made the light to begin with. So he knows exactly the garment that can handle this earth and be at the same time not nullify itself. And that is the that is Tayyid Mitzvah. That is the concept of Torah and Mitzvah. Torah and Mitzvah is the wisdom and the knowledge and the will of God, but it's in a physical world. It is the will of God in a physical world, and it's the Levush that we all can connect to the Ur Hashem, to the light of God. That's beautiful, beautiful God. This is the blessed will and the wisdom and so forth. And so forth out of the, is referring to levels of Bina and Dat, which are part of the intelligence above, as mentioned earlier. Chachma and Bina of the Abishta, which are clothed in the Torah and its mitzvahs that are revealed to us and our children. That's the meaning when we say, and the glorious Lord has nisar us Hashem alekenu, what's hidden is to God, and the glorious Lord, what is capable of revelation was given to us. You're looking for things that are, that are not capable to be revealed. That's, you'll never have that. What we can have is what things that could be revealed. And that is the Torah. That is the, the, the Levush that the Abish that gave. God gave the Torah. God is the only one who can give you a garment that can have within it the concept of the Shekhinah and at the same time not be nullified. And that's the Torah and that's its mitzvahs. The right of Machachma Nachdis, because the right of the Torah comes from the wisdom of Kadosh Baruch Hu, from God. He Chachma Ilah 
which is the wisdom of above. Le'ela Muhammad is galia. It has in, in, immeasurable higher than the world of manifestation, the, which is the shchina. The shchina, the shchina is the way God comes into the world, and the, the shchina is connected to chachma, which is the chachma of the Abishta, which is higher than the revelation of the world. As we brought up before, he is wise with the wisdom of Chachma Vatsilos, the world of emanation, but not with the knowledge of wisdom like we understand wisdom. As I explained before, that the light of the blessed and the safe is enclosed and united with the supernal wisdom. And he and his wisdom are one. So ultimately, when we connect to the wisdom of God, you connect to God himself. Because you cannot separate wisdom and God. The wisdom of God is him. That's what they say. We keep on saying the, 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 word, the, 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 the statement of the beginning of Tanya, the name of the Rambam, who are you there, boy? He's the knower and the knowledge. Which is hard for a human being to comprehend because God is one with his knowledge. But only that because of it, the supernal wisdom of the Tanitayda has been descended by means of obscuring gradations from a higher grade to a lower. That's it. The only thing is, it came that the Tayda that we should be able to open a Chumash today and read it. As you can see how far the Tayda has come down from one garment to another garment, that even a five year old child can learn the Torah. Until this oil, this wisdom of God and this will of God enclosed itself in a physical manifestation so that we as humans can now clothe ourselves with that garment. So the Abishta made a garment that humans can clothe themselves with. The Abishta made a Torah that humans can speak, that humans can understand. The Abishta made a mitzvah that humans can, like I'm going to go put on tefillin in a couple of minutes. He made a garment that I can clothe myself with. I can put it up, I put, up, put it upon me. So he made a mitzvah, which that is his will, created a mitzvah, and he said, with, by me putting on tefillin, I'm going to connect straight to HaKadosh Baruch. I'm going to connect straight to God. Because that mitzvah, me putting on tefillin, is what God wanted, and what God wants is him. We're going to be changed to Yag, Mitzvah, Tayra, which are the 613 commandments. So we, bar- we, we have to Baruch Hashem, that's when we make a brach on a mitzvah. We make a blessing on a mitzvah. We, bar- we thank God that he gave us mitzvahs. He gave us commandments so that we will all can connect to him. We wouldn't be able to connect to God if the Abishta didn't give us mitzvahs. If God didn't give us mitzvahs, we would never be able to connect to a spiritual entity. We are physical people, and it's impossible for the physical person to connect to spiritual, the opposites. Thank God. God gave me the mitzvah tefillah. God gave me a Torah that I can learn. God gave me other mitzvahs, 613 commandments. So through that, I can clothe myself. God made a lavush. He made for himself a garment, and he gave that lavush, that garment, that holds the shechina within him, within it. And he said, now you clothe yourself with that shechina. The shachanti b'seicham. I will dwell in you. You clothe yourself with that, with that garment. And if you clothe yourself with that mitzvah, you have now connected. Even though this mitzvah is physical, you have now connected to the essence of HaKadosh Baruch. You have connected to my essence. So your essence became connected to my essence. And that is why the Abishta gave us Baruch Hashem Atayra, and he gave us Baruch Hashem all these mitzvahs that we can do. And that completes the Tanya of the day. Today is the 27th day of the month of the month of Ir. We are coming this week to the month of Sivan and the soon. And uh, the, the Tilim of the day is chapter 120 till 100. And oh, 120 to 134. 120 to 134. And you would have done 
the chitas of the day. I wish you a wonderful, beautiful, happy, healthy day. Everybody's welcome to come on 10 a.m. We're going to continue the Tanya. Yeah. And uh, have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. Thank you, I see you at 10. God be willing. God bless you. Have a great day. You, you too. too. Bye. Bye.